everyone, and welcome to the special segment of Level Up. With me today, I'm pleased to have Scott McNeely, the founder and chairman of Sun Microsystems, and his son, Maverick McNeely. Welcome, guys, to the show. Great to be here. Thanks. So, Maverick, I understand that you have a pretty awesome school project going on. Can you tell me yeah. a bit about that? The history of computer games. The yes. history of computer games. So what grade are you in now? Sixth grade. So uh, you're already studying computer games in sixth grade. Yeah. Good for you, man. So you know what's the scariest part, Maverick, is that I was there playing on the systems that you know, were at the beginning of the video games industry, so now I feel much older than I should feel right now, so thank you for that. So, okay, the history of computer games. Um, what are some of the things that you're starting to learn as you're doing some of your research? Well, that some of the first computer games weren't exactly on screens and TVs, started out with even things that weren't electric, like pinball, we just move the thing, maze games, anything. Excellent. So. What's very interesting about that too is one of the first known versions of a video game was done by a gentleman named Willie Higginbotham in 1958, I believe. And the systems that That's they used, old as dad. the systems that they used to build, um, that they used during the atomic programs for the government, learning uh, atomic, you know, energy and, and those sorts of things. To make the technology seem uh, more acceptable to people, they created a little game on an oscilloscope called Tennis for Two, and the, this ball would just bounce. And yeah. people were amazed that on this little scope, of course, you had a room full of machines. The original Pong game, right? It was the original Pong game, so it has a very long history as well. And you, you are absolutely right that it started with those sorts of pinball games where you rocked the table and, and, and moved that forward. So do you get to play any video games? What are some of the types of games that you like to play? Well, la oh, last year, uh, Dad gave Dakota a roller coaster tycoon game. He played that on the Mac, right? Yeah, on the Mac. He won't let us get an Xbox. It's Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> you do get to play on the Sunray in the Java browser, though, right? Yeah. What are your favorite games in, on that? Well, I just go to a couple different websites, like Miniclip, Zeeks. So you play in Club Penguin and those sorts of games, too? No. no. Oh. Mini clips. I, where, I, where else do you go? Mini clip. Zeke's games. dot com. Oh, games. dot com. Yeah. And Zeke's, huh? You go. You got a lot of places, huh? So games. dot com, for example, that's a great one. Games. dot com. What are some of the games you play there? Centipede, Monopoly, those sorts of games. Well, when I play Monopoly, I usually beat my brother, but. <laughs> okay, now here's what's very interesting. That game is written entirely in Java. In fact, all of the games that started on games. dot com were originally written entirely in Java, and they work today. And this is seven years ago that those games were originally written. And this is why he wants today. a Java phone, so that he can play those same games on his Java phone. That's right. Well, we have to stay away from you know the iPhone, because you know, yeah. there's no Java there now. So we'll, we'll make sure that we're looking at Nokia or somebody like that, right? Um, so in Roller Coaster Tycoon, you and I were talking about that mm -hmm. before we started taping this here. Your favorite part is probably my favorite part, which is what? Riding the roller coaster. Exactly. After you make it, you like to ride the roller coaster. Huh? Sometimes I like riding it when I haven't finished the track. <laughs> yes. <laughs> see, that is awesome right there. That's so what would you like to see uh, in, in the gaming world? What would you like to see more of in, in the gaming world? What, what are the things that you do like that uh, you don't think there's enough of? Well, there's more games that are more available, less expensive, yeah. and more time. More time to play games. More time to play them. <laughs> well, you know, if we can go ahead and continue to work educational material into some of those games, perhaps you will have more time to do that. But what you're saying is actually something that the games industry, friends of mine in the games industry, are trying to figure out right now. Because these games are so expensive. Back when I started programming on, like, the Commodore VIC-20, you know, games are written in 3K of space. Today, game budgets are $20, $30 million. They require two to five years to develop, teams of two to 300 people, and they're $60 a piece. We don't have that much time. So there's this trend in the industry to start saying, all right, how do we make the games smaller? How do we make them less expensive so more and more people get involved in gaming? And where are they turning to do it? The internet, right? Right. Downloading through mini. Well, the multiplayer games. If you get millions of people doing it at a little little bit of a, at a time, you can uh, certainly fund uh, the development of these new. Absolutely. New environments. Absolutely. You, know, you look at games like uh, Worlds of Warcraft from Blizzard. Eight and a half million people playing worldwide at you know fifteen dollars a pop. That's you know not a bad business to be in. Do you think you could beat him in a game? Hmm. He's I a think chief so. gaming officer, man. That's that's his <laughs> job. Look at his thumbs. He's got he's got really developed thumbs. 
So let me ask you one more question. All of the research you've been doing so far, what is the most interesting thing you've learned about the games industry? Well, maybe how, well, there's this big jump from going from little electric games like right after the crash. There is a big jump going to consoles more than just huge rooms for one game, little consoles that you can plug into your TV. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to little handhelds about this big. Like the PSP, the PlayStation yeah. Portable, Yeah, Nintendo right? DS Lite. Yeah. What's going to be very interesting, too, for you, Mav, is you take a look at um, one of the, uh, the, the, the next evolution in gameplay. We're looking at motion control. So Nintendo's Wii, you know, you play a bowling game, you're not, you're not uh, pressing a button to throw the ball. You take the control and you swing it like you're throwing a bowling You've ball. You've seen the Wii, right? right? Yeah. And the great thing about this is all of a sudden we're getting grandparents to play and we're getting very small kids to play. So it's broadening that whole scope and it's bringing the family back together in front of so the TV. So you're 11 now, you'll be 16 soon. If you, for your 16th birthday, would you like the Wii, the PlayStation, the Xbox, or a PlayStation Portable? What would be your, what would be your number well, one choice? Well, you probably want me to get the Wii, so I'm not staring at the couch all day, but... <laughs> I don't know. What would you get? I'd probably if you had like choose the PlayStation 3. Well, that's a Java game machine, so that's a pretty good Yeah, we have too. some Java in there, so it's not a problem. Yeah. Good job, man. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming on the show. And that's it for this episode of Level Up. Thanks for watching.